I do follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of what I eat is nutrient dense and the other 20% is licorice. Stop staring at my jugs. Yeah, I just had to slipper that in there. Welcome to this week's vlog. You're gonna to see tons of training as well as my nutrition. And at the end, I'm gonna discuss five reasons why you're not improving. I would just like to point out that this outfit matches my slippers. So I'm doing some accessory work, unilateral pistol squats to the bench. And then I worked on my front squats. And then I worked on my cleans. And my cleans are coming along every single time I do them. They're getting better than the time before. It's all about practice and consistency. And as always, every day I commit to my foam rolling and stretching. Here you see me tacking my hip flexor tendon. And the cats love, love, love whenever I'm on the ground. And then you're going to see me with my beastie bar. Team SS member Kylie Morgan won the damn dedicated award this week, and I just shipped her Amino X Edge to Australia from bodybuilding.com. We are international. I need to brag about Kylie and the effort that she put into improving her air squat. I know how much time and effort and consistency goes into improving an air squat. You can see her before on the right. See how she's leaning forward? Look at her after on the left. Look at how upright she is. I am so happy for you, Kylie. If I could get away with it, I would wear these pants every single day of my life because they're just so friggin' epic. Oh my goodness, Bean. How did you get all of that on you? You're no longer a white bean. Now you're a black bean. Back to the basics with my rotator cuff here doing my external rotation. And then you see me doing an isometric hold because one of my shoulders isn't as strong as the other. And notice my hips are not rocking. That's tough. Give it a try. And then, of course, my weighted scapular retractions. If you're new to this, then don't do the ankle weights. Notice I'm just holding it isometrically. And then I did my unilateral glute bridges. Mom's playing with Bean as I'm doing my banded good mornings. And then I did my deadlifts. And I'm no longer using VersaGrips. I'm just using my bare hands. So go me! And then I'm preferentially leaning on my weaker shoulder, the left shoulder with the handstand. And I'm actually holding the handstand. And then I did my floor press as well as my isometric hold for my pull-ups and then my push-ups. And it's so hard to do push-ups properly. Do you do them properly? Do you? And then my ring rows. So notice I hold at the top and go into full arm extension. And then I finished up with some rowing. Let's talk about diet. There's such a huge psychological component to dieting. Now, I'm not dieting. I am fueling my body with adequate calories so that I can perform well and get stronger. I'm as human as the rest of you. So it's really easy for me to not eat the greens, but rather, oh, I want those. So this is my strategy. As soon as I get home from the grocery store, I organize my food in a way that I know it'll encourage me to actually follow through with eating it. If I were to buy a head of cauliflower and throw it in my fridge, I'll end up throwing it out a week later. So if I have it already cut up and ready to go, I'm more likely to eat it. And then I have to be smart and figure, okay, how am I gonna actually encourage myself to eat something like this instead of this? Well, it's all about dressing your food up like it's going to the Academy Awards. So this is my strategy. If I'm gonna eat these dudes, well, what if I dress them up with these portion controlled packets of guacamole? One packet is 100 calories. How about trying to force myself to eat all of this chicken? The way I encourage myself to do it is by having a whole wheat bun or bagel and slapping the chicken into it like that. Then it makes me excited to eat the chicken. Instead of eating the Twizzlers, I think it's a lot smarter to go for an apple. I do eat an apple a day. Now this is dangerous. If you leave these just in one big bowl, you're gonna end up eating all of them. So you can see what I've done is I divided them into four different portions for four different days. It really didn't take me more than 10 minutes of my time to organize all of this. I'm excited to be on track with my nutrition because I know it's going to help me with my performance goals. And I am an intermittent faster, so I prefer to train fasted 
and I use my BCAAs, and if I train in the morning, I use the one with caffeine, Amino X Edge, just because it's also my pre-workout. And I prefer to eat in the evening because that's my eating personality, and it also allows me to be more productive during the daytime hours because I'm not stopping to eat all the time. Now, my window can range from anywhere from four to eight hours. It just really depends on my schedule. I really think that flexibility with a structured approach is the secret sauce. And that's what's going to minimize this psychological torment that is so typically experienced with dieting. Although I'm not dieting. I am having adequate calories. I am fueling myself to perform. Ooh, I friggin' love this Reebok outfit. Now, truthfully, I could barely get the pants up over my arse, but I did get them up. Isn't that cute, the hoodie? I have committed to doing a back bridge every single day. Here are my air squats. Do yours look like that? Then I started working on my pistol squats. I could do it with the left leg, but not yet with my right leg. So I know that I need to get to work on that. And then I did my back squats with a tempo. So notice I'm holding at the bottom. I went slow on the way down and then poof, I come back up. Then I'm doing the banded pull aparts with my palms facing up. And then I did five sets of three wall walks, which I thought I was going to die. It just destroyed me. My coach told me he was initially going to make me do five sets of five of these. And I'm like, um, yeah, not this week. That's, not, that's just not going to happen this week. No, no. Good morning. It's such a beautiful day. Let me show you from the other side. Yeah, Bean's got the best location on his hammock. Look at the view. So I'm just clearing away all the cat toys out of the gym. Gonna foam roll and stretch because my coach is coming over. We're gonna be doing some snatches. And Gus is here and he's got all the cats. And there's just so much drama going on here. Can you see that my mirror has now officially become a whiteboard? See that, see that? I didn't know you could do that to a mirror. Best day ever. Hang, snatch, high pull into hang power snatch, into snatch press, into snatch balance, into overhead squats. Yeah. Yes. 40 pounds. 40 pounds? Good. Same thing. There we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Difference? Yes. Good. Yes. Okay, feet in. Feet together, squeeze your bum. Squeeze your core, your body's a column, press up. Good, that's it. Good, brace. Squeeze your butt, good. All right, now everything tight again. Hips forward, dip drive punch. There we go. That was better. Yeah. Two overhead squats, keep it nice and tight in the butt. Oops, stay, yeah. Keep that core braced. Try to sit back a little bit further, right? Feel how you're coming into your knees a little bit on the overhead squats. I was just trying not to die. Gus left me with homework, so that was my hang power snatch into my three snatch presses. And then I will do the snatch balance. Here it comes. Poof. And then I will do three overhead squats and I will superset those suckers with five banded ring dips and I'll repeat this pleasant routine five times and then finish up with a 20 minute recovery row. Oh dear, how did that get into my grocery bag? Hmm, maybe the same way you'll get into my guilt chamber later. I do follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of what I eat is nutrient dense and the other 20% is licorice. Coco, is that annoying? She keeps getting away from him inch by inch, but he just keeps getting closer and closer. I just got the 35 pound women's bar. So this is my Rogue Barbell Collection. That's the 45 pound Men's Ohio, 35 pound Bella for women, and the 15 pound training bar. 
I just tried the women's bra for the first time and I don't like how it's such a small diameter. I'm used to grabbing onto things with a much bigger diameter. That's what she said. Okay, so you can see I am doing bench step ups and slowly lowering. Now, notice how I'm also working my psoas. See what I did there? And then poof! Remembering that my knee is merely a hinge joint. Then I worked on my Russian baby makers and I had a new PR with my pull-ups. I was able to do six of them this week. So all that accessory work is paying off. And my toes to bar, they're looking so much better than in previous weeks. So I'm just excited for these to keep getting better. And then I supersetted my toes to bar with 50 double unders. Double unders, this is super easy for me. This is like my thing. And you can learn how to do double unders by clicking the card. And you can learn more about my jump rope too. And then I threw in some cleans and finished up with some front squats. Et voila. Going for a run? Ooh, my sister sent this for the cats. It's a scratching post laser toy and they're playing in the box. Classic. I better not let my sister know that all they wanted was the box. Come on, I haven't even assembled it yet, guys. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Did you sleep on the slipper? Did you bring that up there? I planned for today to be my rest day because I was attending a dental lecture all day and there was even a test. I'm just looking. Super nibs. Or nibs. He gets so upset when everything's on the counter except him. He can't jump up yet. Come on, try. On my way home from the dental lectures, I decided to get some groceries. This is hygienic. So you can see the first thing I do when I get home from the grocery store is I organize my stuff into containers. Lately I'm really into hard boiled eggs and I got my veggies, my chicken, my grapes, I'm really into them and you know I'm really into apples. And you already know I follow the 80-20 rule, 80% healthy and 20% licorice. By the way, this is my favorite panda licorice. It's got molasses in it and it makes you go poo poo. Okay, I just freshened up and I'm ready to do some stuff to unfreshen myself. New record for my thousand meter run. I just shaved a few seconds off. Now I do it in five minutes and seven seconds. So about 7.34 miles per hour. Take it to your graph. I like to do velocity versus time. And there's my new dot. You can see that I am getting faster across broad time. That's the goal. You don't always wanna be running the exact same distance every single week. You wanna be running different distances all the time and improving your time every single time you do it. So last time I did the 1000 meter run, I did it at 7.2 miles an hour. So you can see just by increasing it a tad bit, I was actually able to get that motivating feeling of getting faster than the week before. But had I jumped it up to say 7.5 miles an hour, I probably would have failed. Start humble and make humble changes weekly. And in case you're wondering, I run about two times a week on non-consecutive days and I never know what I'm gonna do. I purposely am changing it up. So I might be doing a sprint one day, another day I might be doing a longer distance run. My key point is that you should never get yourself into a routine. You guys, stop it. Look at that. It looks like they're friends now. Back to the basics again with my arch body holds, hollow body holds, as well as my side planks. Now I'm doing unilateral banded scapular retractions because I want to be able to nail my strict pull-ups. Then I worked on some push press and I just wasn't feeling it and I think it's because I didn't have enough calories the day before. Then I used my 43 pound water jugs to do farmer's carry and suitcase deadlifts. Now you have to watch this. You know it's kind of stressful doing this because I don't know what they're going to do to me. So watch this. Watch Bean. I think he's a copycat. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. And then they got into a fight so I knew I was safe to pump out a whole bunch of these. And I had a new record with these. I was able to do 10, last week only seven. Watch Bean. Yeah, that is stressful. <laughs> First you're gonna see Coco on the box, then you'll see Bean on the box. So I wanna improve my horizontal pulling strength. I know this is gonna carry over into my pull-ups because I wanna be able to do 10 strict pull-ups. Bean's turn. 
They are so funny. And then I finished it off with some handstand holds. You can never do enough of these. And if you can't do them, then lean against the wall. Bean just wants to be with Coco so badly and she's not having it. Here are five reasons why you're not improving. And how do I know what these five are? Well, because I was guilty of doing all five of these. And once I fixed that, I started to improve. Number one, you're not getting enough sleep. You can't improve your performance if you're exhausted all the time. I recommend getting at least eight hours of sleep. Number two, you're not listening to your body and you're not taking rest days when you need it. That's when your body repairs and recovers. Number three, you are not fueling yourself with adequate calories. You know, this is not a time to be dieting. And just so you know, I am not eating diet calories. I am fueling myself so that I can perform and get stronger. So calorie adequacy is king. You can't just pump any old calories into your body and expect to perform. I mean, if you fuel yourself with junk, then your body is going to perform like junk. So that's why I want 80% of the calories I consume to be nutrient dense. And then the other 20%, I always joke, is licorice. I don't just pick any random calories. I am very aware of the amount of carbs I eat, the amount of protein I eat, and the amount of fats I eat. And I have a very consistent approach. So if I notice my performance is starting to struggle, well then I can look at what I'm doing and tweak it so that I can start getting results again. Number four, and I'm guilty of having done this, and that is doing a movement over and over again improperly. And this is the year that I decided to clean up my form. And I see so many people, and I'm, I'm not calling any BO because I told you I used to do this myself. They don't even have proper squat form and then they're trying to load themselves up with tons of plates on their barbell, which is just, I just cringe when I see that because I already know the outcome. Not a good outcome. So my advice to you is to just ditch your ego and go back to the basics and learn how to air squat properly and ask yourself, okay, why can't I air squat properly? And that means you're gonna to need to look at your entire body. Like, do you have tight hips? Do you not have enough core strength? Is your thoracic mobility restricted? What about your ankle mobility? Are you even engaging your posterior chain? So, you know, you need to kind of look above and beyond. That's why you see me doing so much accessory work. And that's why you see me improve. So sometimes taking two steps backwards is the recipe for taking multiple strides forward. So don't be afraid to move backwards. And this brings me to the last point, number five which is the importance of building a stable base. So don't be afraid to go back to the drawing board. And that's what you've been seeing me do for the past six months. I'm focusing all my energy on my mobility, my flexibility, and working on improving my core strength. You see me doing a lot of unilateral work to improve what's happening with my posterior chain. And you know, I've really put a lot of time and effort into this and it has truly paid off. So you have evidence that it works. Taking steps backwards is the recipe for moving forward. So let me ask you this. Are you guilty of thinking that progress means you are putting more plates on your barbell every single week when you're doing your bench press and your back squats and your deadlifts? I have to ask you one question. Does your body feel really comfortable when you're doing these things? Or do you have like this nagging shoulder problem or your back feels uncomfortable or your knees are annoyed? Because if that's the case, then this vlog is for you. Look, you've watched enough of me training in this vlog to know if your back squats and air squats are sketchy. So if they are, then take my advice and go back to steps four and five. And you know, if you're too embarrassed to go into the gym and suddenly take all your plates off, well then do it in the privacy of your own home. You can learn how to do your air squats and strengthen your core and work on your mobility in the privacy of your own home. So this week I want you to pick three things that you know you can start implementing on a regular basis that will change your game. So for example, maybe it's getting an extra hour of sleep. Maybe it's incorporating foam rolling into your regimen. Or maybe it's adding hollow body holds and arch body holds every single day to your regime. Comment below, let me know. Thank you so much for watching this week's vlog. Thank you for subscribing. You know, it really helps my channel grow and I really enjoy the weekly interaction with you. So thank you for commenting. And um, I'm forgetting what I'm supposed to say next. So um, subscribe or else... Um, 
toenail fungus. <laughs>